Bitcoin. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We hope you are safe and coping with the situation. I'm Elias Nicholas, uh, a Green Tech Specialist at Veritech, and I'll be your host for today. As you all know, we're facing uh, major issues in the Green Tech sector and we need to start acting upon. We need to create a supportive community of experts, NGOs, public and private sectors to help and support startups and entrepreneurs working in the clean tech sector, which will help us and them answer not only local, but also regional and international needs in this sector. The clean tech learning series uh, are organized by Veritech under the Clean Energy Program, which is funded by the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Lebanon. The Clean Energy Accelerator aims at supporting ideas and startups working on solutions to the challenges that exist in the clean tech sector. So the team will have to tackle challenges in transportation, energy, water, waste, or agriculture. So through this program, Veritech will offer the selected stuff, the resources, the knowledge, support, and funding necessary to scale and grow. You can check additional info and eligibility criteria on Veritech's website, veritech.org. So you can go to Programs section and select Clean Energy. The deadline to apply for the first batch of the Clean Energy Accelerator is beginning of June. So if you think you have an innovative solution in the clean tech sector, I urge you to check the website and submit your application. The Clean Technology Learning Series is continuing to happen every Tuesday on Zoom. So we are having every week different guests discussing the challenges and opportunities in the clean tech sector, specifically in waste management, water, wastewater management, and energy. At the, at the end of this webinar, we are having a, a Q&A from the audience, and also we are having some, uh, some discussions between myself and, uh, and the speakers. Uh, the Q&A from the audience is happening on the Slido, so we'll be sharing the link on the chat window. You can click on it and write down your questions. For today's webinar, our guest speakers are specialists and they they work in the finance and invest, uh, investor uh, part of the ecosystem. So I would like to thank our guest speakers in this webinar. Uh, we'll be hosting today uh, Basilon, Nicola Ruhana, and Salim Shami. Uh, I would like first to start uh, with our first speaker, which is uh, Basil uh, Aum. Uh, Basil is the project manager at uh, Kafalat ASMB program. Uh, he joined Kafalat in 2015 as project manager for the ISME program, uh, a $30 million co-investment initiative, which is funded by the government of Lebanon through a loan from the World Bank. Uh, before joining Kafalat, he spent six years working for Quartilion, the funds of funds division of ACG Capital. Uh, it's a Paris-based private equity firm with more than two billion uh, euro uh, in assets under management. Uh, and prior to that, Basil had more than four years of strategic asset allocation and alternative investments experience working for leading European insurance companies as AXA uh, and uh, Groupama in Paris. He holds a master's degree in finance from the European Business School in Paris and an executive education certification from Harvard Business School with uh, emphasis on private equity and venture capital. Basil, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, with, without uh, any delays, I'll leave you now to lead on your presentation. You can go ahead and share your screen. That's what you're, you're on mute. Yeah, you're, you're on mute again. Please. Yes, okay. now, now all's good. Okay, we can see we can see the, we can see your slides. Okay. 
Thank you, Elias, for the kind presentation and for Veritech for hosting me. And thank you for the audience for your time. I will take you through a presentation about the ISME program and try to link it to the Clean Tech Energy program at Veritech and see and we'll explore the potential opportunity if uh, startups enrolled in the program can benefit from the ISME program in the future. As Elias mentioned, uh, the ISME program is a $30 million initiative funded by the government of Lebanon and through a loan from the World Bank. So our, uh, the money comes from the World Bank to the government and they choose Kafalat as an implementing agency. So we at Kafalat, we handle the management of the program. And the idea behind it, the purpose of this program was to encourage the early stage market uh, financing market to support technology startups, uh, especially that in Lebanon at the time there was a real need يعني, where we identified a gap in early stage financing. And here actually what we're trying to solve as problem <laughs> in the market is the access to equity finance. Actually it starts with the happy days where people have ideas, they have uh, they are innovators and so on. However, the reality is what we call the death valley, where they go to the market, they try to get financing for their ideas, and here the reality is, okay, people are not willing to finance. Here in Lebanon, we are used on a more a banking uh, uh, sector with debt financing, which is not the appropriate tool to finance technology startups. So here, the role of ISME is to join forces with other players in the market. We'll, uh, I will introduce you to them later on, in order to fill that gap and to provide financing to technology startups and the Lebanese innovators. Having said that, actually we have three financing tools in order to address this pain in the market. The first one is the concept development grants, where we award grants up to $15,000 to idea stage startups. The idea behind this, uh, this tool is to create what we call as an investor the pipeline so is to encourage people to take the risk we take the financial risk by providing the money and we tell them okay listen work on, on your idea and try to to do like a proof of concept in order to be ready for financing unfortunately today this program is fully deployed uh, since we started back in 2015 and we awarded around 175 grantees I will talk later on about them. Uh, but the good story now is that we are in serious discussion with the World Bank in order to, uh, to have additional financing for this concept development grants because now that we have a track record in that field and the results are very encouraging. The second tool is the di what we call the direct co-investments where we co-invest alongside other institutional investors in the market we join forces to provide equity financing to technology startups. Here the pocket is where we're talking about 17 to $20 million capacity. Uh, our uh, maximum ticket is $1.5 million. And if we look at our existing portfolio today, the average ticket is around $600,000. So we invest at the seed level stage, at the venture level and at the growth level stage with a follow on strategy where we invest in a startup and we continue to support the, the existing portfolio companies throughout the life of their financing needs. And the second tool is the indirect investments where we join forces with existing funds with angel networks and we invest at the network level or at the fund level and here what we call a fund of fund strategy. So we provide financing for a for an institutional investor and then through the, the, uh, those institutional investors, the money is channeled to underlying companies and to end beneficiaries. So since we are a state sponsored fund, the geography actually is Lebanon, definitely. We invest exclusively in Lebanese companies. The sector that we target, we consider ourselves being sector agnostics. However, we invest in technology and innovation. So we like what we call applied technology, any technology in any sector. So it could be in agriculture, however, it has to have a, a tech component or a tech angle. We can invest in industry or in pure technologies like SaaS or 
medical devices and so on. And our target persona is, as you can see in my slide, entrepreneurs, innovators, university students that can benefit from the grants, business ideas, startups that can apply for the equity program, and definitely when it comes to fund of funds, VC firms and angel funds. So this is our, like, uh, our target market, people that can benefit from our uh, program. Moving to the competitors, or our partners. Actually, since we are a co-investment fund, we talk more about partners than competitors because actually we work with all the ecosystem players. On the business support side, definitely we work with Beritech, with Speed, with Agritech, Flat6 Lab, and all the university centers like the Asher Center uh, at USAC, Smart ESA at, uh, at ESA Business School. And on the investor side, we work with IM Capital and the Angel Network, uh, Cedars Angel Network, and I'm sure that my colleague Nicola Rohana will take you through uh, IM Capital and Cedars Network program, and will give you additional information about this. We work with Phoenician Fund, Beritech, MEVP, and all the institutional investors existing in Lebanon. On that side, we don't have any issue with the nationality of the investors. We only focus on the nationality of the end user, which is the company benefiting from financing. So in some cases, we invested alongside international investors or regional investors. Here, for example, 500 startups, we invested alongside them in several ventures. On the traction and our portfolio, where we stand today, on the grants, as I've said, we are fully deployed and we're working to have additional funding on that side. And we supported 175 grantees. Some of the names might be, uh, I don't know, uh, publicly known like Fabric Aid or Sinkers or 209 Lebanese Wine and so on in, in various sectors. For example, Naotech is a FinTech company, Sinkers in education tech, Groovy Antioid is in the gaming industry, uh, Fabric Aid is a social impact company. Moving to the direct co investment portfolio, as we speak, we have 18 companies. We've invested $11 million, and we have software as a service companies like Treasury Express and the Treasury Management Solution, Cam Kalima as education tech. We have some hardware companies like Reef Kinetics, which is a uh, uh, testing for water testing uh, device for aquariums. We have Rodi Tuner, which is a kind of automatic tuner for uh, electrical guitars and other uh, instruments. We have a last mile delivery app like Totters. And on the indirect investment, as of today, we've supported, we joined forces with IM Capital to support four different angel funds for a total amount of $1.9 million. And we have an underlying portfolio and building up since we have uh, the last Cedars uh, 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 fund is operational now. And we hope to have additional four companies joining the, this underlying portfolio. And we've supported companies like Handis, like uh, Geek Express and Janisa. This is our portfolio today. We're still active in the market and we're looking to invest and additional companies and to support the existing ones. Since we're talking about clean tech, uh, we have some what uh, clean tech uh, portfolio companies, especially at the grant side. And here I have a, a small sample. We have company like Carpolo, which is a carpooling company. We have Riego, which is a device that manage the irrigation systems. We have LIM, which is a recycling and garbage management platform. Uh, Docs, which is a technology, more a software side that uh, helps uh, optimize the use of uh, battery for like electrical cars and so on. So this, just to give you an example of where it overlaps between ISME and the clean tech programs and how we've supported uh, what we consider being clean tech uh, startups in Lebanon. However, we are a VC investor. And actually, I've looked at the VC market and how uh, the VCs invest in clean tech. Back in 2007, actually, we thought that, and this is, was a big trend in the US, that green technology 
is going to be bigger than internet. And this is a, a statement by John Dower from Kleiner Perkins, which is a, a massive VC fund in Silicon Valley. And he considered that this, the green technology is going to be a huge opportunity for VC investors. However, in 2016, a study by MIT showed that it was not actually the case and something went wrong and there was a huge bubble out there when it comes to VC money flying into clean tech energy. And they like, wanted to present a simplistic view on why it didn't work actually and what is the problem between VC firms, strategies and clean tech companies. And actually in this table, we can show that invest, the investment time horizon for a clean tech company is much more longer than a, soft, a traditional software company. And the capital intensity, which is a very critical uh, point for VC investors, it's large upfront costs for clean tech and lower upfront costs for a software company. And usually VCs don't like to invest in, in companies that have a, a high capital intensity. And going to scalability as well, definitely VCs looks for scalable companies where they can scale uh, at a lower cost versus scalability require, uh, in clean tech companies might require additional capital and infrastructure to scale. Having said that, some of the VCs worked on the idea of instead of going and uh, having what we call a technology first approach, we, witness, we are witnessing a trend where VCs are looking on what we call a behavioral change approach. Instead of investing in uh, uh, large clean tech uh, R&D and so on, that requires massive support from governments and from large investors. So a fund called Amazia VC, invented like this uh, five R's, what we call the five R's. And here I think that Lebanon, especially Lebanon, could benefit from this analysis because we are a small country. We don't have massive support from public entities. R&D at the level of university is still low and we cannot like invest in massive technologies related to clean tech. However, we can play a role in catalyzing behavioral change. So we can have a software based on reducing emission instead of inventing the new uh, uh, electrical car. We can have reuse and recycling mechanisms or software that enable this, replacing bricks with bytes. And here actually what is funny about this you know, is uh, now with this COVID-19 uh, crisis, it makes my, much more sense because as we see for the replacing bricks and with bytes, we can see that uh, e-learning or remote learning or remote uh, uh, banking and so on is part of the behavioral change. And now it is enforced by the COVID-19 and it has an impact on the environment. Now we can see that because we are confined that uh, uh, the, like, the CO2 emission is lower and so on. So, uh, in, so here we have like start to make much more sense with what, we're, what we are facing now with the COVID-19 crisis. And then we have software that are smart grid software, uh, shared resources enablers, and so on. And reducing consumption by smart building software, long duration consumer goods, and so on. So some of the VCs are more promoting this type of investment that uh, overlaps between clean tech and agile software companies where the return in, in, on investment is high and the capital intensity is low. And, and if we take this and we apply it on ISME portfolio, I'm pretty sure that some of the companies that uh, I don't consider being clean tech, for example, a company like Sinkers might be considered today as a clean tech company because it promotes remote learning. Or for example, a company like Fabric8, which is considered being a, a, a more social impact company, could be considered as a clean tech company today because it enables the second head marketplaces where reuse and recycling is considered as clean tech. 
And on that notice, I would like to end my presentation and give the floor for maybe the question is not for now. I don't know how. Uh, so I will give the floor to Elias to, to wrap up. Uh, the last slide, actually, this is the team. We are uh, at Kafalat. We work under the Kafalat uh, uh, company. We are four on the front office side. And definitely we have the support for the back office from Kafalat as a company. Thank you all for listening, and I will be waiting for your questions. Thank you, Vassal. Thank you so much for, for this great intervention. I'm sure the audience has lots of questions, and we'll be taking them at the end of the session. So please, guys, make sure to add your questions on Slido. I have shared the, the link on the chat window. Please go, uh, go on Slido and uh, type in your questions. We'll be taking them at the end of the session. Uh, now let's move to our next speaker for today, Nicola Rohana. Uh, Nicola uh, is the general manager at uh, I Am Capital. Between the 2002 and 2015, Nicola, uh, Nicola was the, ex the executive director of Veritech Technological Hall for Business Innovation and Incubation in Lebanon. Uh, he was counseling and mentoring Lebanese entrepreneurs and their startup uh, ventures. Uh, since uh, 2008, he has been the senior strat strategy and technical advisor to Veritech Fund an entity which is investing in Lebanese technology startups. Uh, and Dr. Rihanna is uh, actually a lecturer at the St. Joseph University Faculty of Engineering. Uh, and he is also a board member of uh, Eyes of Lebanon chapter, Baytag, and Lebanon Internet uh, Center. Uh, Nicola is a certified business incubation trainer from InfoDev uh, and an accredited business innovation center uh, and, and accredited uh, Business Innovation Center Auditor. Uh, and he's also an administrator of Beirut Inter Internet Exchange Point. He holds a telecommunications engineering degree from the St. Joseph University and a PhD in networking systems from Université Pierre et Marie Curie in Paris. Uh, thank you, Nicolas, for joining us uh, today. And uh, I leave you now to lead on your presentation. Uh, you can go ahead and share your screen. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, okay, so I'm turning my video on, unmuting, sharing screen. We can see you and we can hear you. Uh -huh. with screen. Okay, share. And uh, uh, just before I start, a small disclaimer. This is an old bio, yeah, Elias. Uh, there are lots of info that uh, you know are no longer uh, relevant, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so just everyone to know that I did not send this by who he found it somewhere <laughs> and uh, there are a lot I, I'm no longer half of what he said and so uh, so voila so that uh, so that you know uh, second is uh, hello everyone thanks uh, for having me and uh, I hope you're all safe and well confined uh, I will go through uh, uh, what we do at I am Capital. So uh, I hope you're seeing my screen. So you see my name, email, contact, eventually Twitter account, uh, Instagram, Facebook. In case you get bored, you can like, you know, mention and say good or bad stuff about, uh, about me if, if, uh, during the presentation. Uh, so today uh, I'm uh, managing I am Capital, uh, which is a program under Veritech uh, as well and funded uh, by USAID uh, under the NINA Investment Initiative. And the idea of this program, which started in 2015, is to uh, help access to early stage financing where it's more risky and less, uh, you find less capital in this early stage and see it where, uh, because it's, it's risky. Uh, so we do, uh, we encourage uh, investments in early stage by doing three things. One, matching capital, so we de-risk an investment uh, in either a business or uh, an intermediary, such as an investor, accelerator, uh, or angel fund. <clears throat> Second thing that uh, we do to de-risk investments is we provide insurance capital or equity guarantees for investors. And the third component is technical assistance or what we call human investment, human capital. Uh, where we provide capacity building and uh, you know, we try to fill gaps in the uh, uh, ecosystem. Now, uh, throughout the years, uh, the last five years, four to five years, so we were able to 
uh, to fill gaps in the ecosystem. So if you look at the, uh, uh, this funnel, where uh, you go from pre acceleration phase uh, all the way to, to Series A, uh, in, in terms of funding in the life cycle of a startup, you see that there are much more uh, money uh, concentrated you know, in later stage, you know, Series A, series a and, and above. There are lots of, lots of funds there. Where about the, uh, the less in the riskier early stage, obviously. Uh, so this is where we come in, and I've highlighted, uh, you know, encircled what us as IM Capital uh, is our playground, and we've developed a community and programs around uh, around these uh, stages. So we've created Speed, the first uh, uh, seed accelerator. Uh, we've created uh, angel groups which were missing in, in, uh, in the ecosystem uh, and mentorship uh, program. And I'll just talk about uh, those uh, in a, a bit details. So, uh, so Speed is the first seed accelerator that was created in, uh, in Lebanon. Now we have two or three that have uh, come up since. Uh, so us along uh, other ecosystem players, we uh, co-founded Speed which, you know, it's a seed accelerator and graduated uh, over uh, five bachelors and over 34, 35 startups. Uh, and so we were part of seeding this, this initiative. Uh, we as well co-invested uh, with uh, current VCs, obviously, and ISME is one of them, and obviously, uh, Diane Padre and Billy Dees. Uh, so my colleagues, we are uh, part of uh, the, the matching capital in some of the portfolio companies. So uh, we have uh, invested in, in tech and non-tech. So if you look at this uh, portfolio, so uh, this is not all of it. Uh, you can find it in, in the link on the slide. Uh, so you see that we uh, really have a broad uh, spectrum of, of sectors that we invested in. So we have a couple of agrofood, which is non-tech. Uh, fashion, uh, design, furniture design, biomedical. We've even uh, co-financed a movie uh, because we've, we believe that, uh, and, and these sectors are not chosen uh, randomly, they're chosen because we, we figure that they're, 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 they're a good industry and they have, they have potential uh, to, uh, uh, to grow. You know, the movies, the agro-food and, and, and the fashion and the creative uh, industry uh, at large. Obviously, we've done the classical tech, you know, uh, internet platforms, marketplaces, uh, ed tech, and, and, and hardware as well. Um, I mean, uh, Basil mentioned uh, a few, so obviously we've, we've co-funded some of those uh, startups uh, together. So we, we do fill a sector gap as, as I am capital. Uh, and we do fill equity gap. So we, we, we created uh, a missing piece, which was uh, speed, a seed accelerator, other missing pieces that were, uh, were not in the Lebanese ecosystem were, were angel, uh, angel, invest, uh, angel investors. So now there are investors, you know, scattered around, but there was not a structured uh, uh, approach to getting angel funding. So we've created a few years back the first structured uh, angel groups uh, by creating a program called an MBA, which is a master class for business angels. And uh, so uh, just to correct Basil, because he said four, it's actually five uh, with this group. And we have a roster of 130 angels and we have a certification program for the leaders, group coaches, etc. And so we were able to, uh, to raise uh, a bit uh, short than $4 million. And what happens is that, you know, a, a startup can come and pitch. Every six, every six weeks, uh, there are uh, pitching sessions uh, that are uh, in, front of the, uh, in front of the angels. So uh, startups do apply to the program. There's a pre-pitching uh, uh, filtering, and then there is the, the actual pitching to angels. And then the angels, you know, go through due diligence and voting process and methodology. And then at the end, they vote to invest an average ticket of $100,000 uh, on the uh, for the for the startup, so we've done like a bit of, uh, around 15 investments over the, the past uh, past years, and it's still ongoing uh, till now. Uh, till uh, so today we have a fifth group that is uh, is up and running. And if you're a women entrepreneur over there, now we're calling out for women entrepreneur to 
uh, to apply for the next uh, pitches, which are on, on June 5, which is like in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I encourage you to go online uh, to the, the websites and, and, and to apply for the, the pitches. As I said, every six weeks there are pitches. So there's the June, then there's the July session, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so you get the chance to pitch in front of angels if you're raising funds uh, from uh, from these uh, in, in the in the 100k uh, average ticket. And obviously, I have to thank uh, ISME program, uh, which are uh, co-funding this this initiative, uh, and, uh, and they've been doing this for the last uh, three uh, uh, three groups. Uh, uh, another piece that we've created as well is the uh, mentorship platform. Again, part of supporting entrepreneurs is a good mentorship. So we've, uh, we're a sister program for MIT, uh, MS, a service. Uh, and so we've created a platform where startups can go and apply to get mentorship. Uh, and it's based on team, uh, team mentoring and not one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very enriching experience that the mentors and the ventures uh, do get. And again, as I said, it's sector agnostic. So uh, any, any, uh, any sector can apply, any, uh, any venture, any sector can apply. Same for the, the Cedars uh, program as well. So it's not just uh, for technology or for tech. So it's open to, to all, uh, all sectors. Uh, we have more than 60 volunteer mentors. And by the way, it's free of charge. Yeah? So all the, all the mentoring, uh, the mentoring program is, is free of charge. So I do really encourage you to, to apply to this, to this program uh, as well. Uh, and and it's, it's really helpful. And it helped startups raise you know, uh, a lot of, of, uh, of capital through, uh, through this, to this program. Uh, my last slide is the outlook that we have. Uh, as I said, uh, at IAM Capital, we've, uh, we've filled holes in the ecosystem, but obviously there are still uh, uh, holes in the ecosystem. And IAM Capital is a program uh, that is now, you know, at the, uh, at the end of its uh, deployment. And now we are, the outlook is now if we have uh, extra funding from USAID, uh, extra $40 million to uh, fill other type of holes in the ecosystem. Obviously, uh, if you look at the slide, there's still, uh, you know, later stage, uh, later stage financing, growth stage financing that's still missing. So we're gonna try to fill this hole. Uh, we have gaps still between the accelerators and the, the angel funding as well. So there's still links to be made at this level as well. Uh, there are, if you go outside Beirut, there are still some missing pieces in the ecosystem outside Beirut. We look at Tripoli, you know, Zahle, etc. So we're looking at rural uh, initiatives to, to help the ecosystems over there. And if we look at really the non-tech uh, ecosystem, it's quasi in existence. So that's why we are uh, alongside partners such as ISME and, and Viridis, uh, we are looking at creating a, a, a targeted green fund. Uh, specifically for, uh, because we see that there's potential and lots of initiative that uh, are coming out, such as the, uh, you know, the clean tech and agri tech from, uh, from Berry Tech. And uh, another uh, key or buzzwords nowadays is the uh, social entrepreneurship. So we're looking at, uh, as well at uh, co-funding or co-creating a, a social impact uh, fund uh, as well, alongside, uh, uh, you know, later state like a PEVC type of, uh, of, uh, of a mechanism or, or SPV. Voila, I'll end here and uh, wait for the questions that will come, I guess, when they come. Thank you, thank you, Nicola, for, for the great intervention. Uh, so just a reminder, guys, please make sure that you're adding your questions on Slido, because we'll be taking them at the end of, of the webinar. Uh, without further delays, let's move to our last speaker for today, uh, Salim Shami. Uh, Salim is the Viridis Manager and, uh, at the Fondation Diane. Uh, Salim is a multi-purpose investment specialist with developed skills in origination, relationship management, interpersonal influencing, negotiation, transaction management, asset management, valuation, financial analysis, financial control, team management, problem solving. Uh, he's, he has worked on many transactions in Lebanon and the GCC and many cross-border transactions spanning from Europe, Africa to the Middle East. 
Salim has a comprehensive understanding of m and markets, corporate finance, equity, and debt raising, uh, and also about banking activities, financial planning, capital market, structured finance, and investment products, which is including uh, across the deal process, including origination, placement, and distribution. Uh, Salim built and managed teams of more than 14 analysts to cover DCM, ECM, project finance, fund structuring, structured finance, and to manage the process from origination to syndication and distribution, uh, including structuring, execution, and agency services. Uh, Salim, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, please go ahead and share your screen, and I'll leave you to lead on your presentation. Uh, thank you, Elias, uh, and thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Uh, I think I'm already sharing the screen. Can you can you acknowledge, Elias, that the, yes, the presentation yes. is showing? Okay, great. Uh, I'm not a tech savvy man, so as as Elias was just saying. Uh, I have a financial background and been working all my life into uh, finance solutions and investment solution. Uh, uh, very lately, it has been there for a long while. Uh, it all started with a dream and ambition of uh, Diane Father, uh, who wanted to basically uh, enhance civic awareness and eco-sustainable development in Lebanon. So she came up with that uh, foundation. She had several different projects before that, uh, but uh, ever since 2015-16, Fondation Dian is on the market, uh, trying to enlighten the citizen about their responsibilities toward Lebanese. It's also trying to motivate and mobilize people uh, to take action and participate uh, into different uh, projects uh, in Lebanon to turn Lebanon into a green and environmental friendly uh, uh, economy. And it's also there to support creative minds uh, that are engaged in making a change to sustainable development. I'll come back to all these points in the next slide. Uh, so the main anchors around the values of Fondation Dian are mainly about sustainability that's really important to us and then innovation co courage and integrity uh, are, are values that are pretty much uh, looked into whenever we're assessing an opportunity to partner up or invest with entrepreneurs or startups in lebanon so the aim out of all of this and out of the foundation itself is to give birth to a new citizen who is conscious of his rights and duties uh, Diane and Fondation Diane is looking mainly to make a change in Lebanon because we see that our country has been suffering uh, lots of economic, political and uh, business turmoil. So we really uh, bet on the new generation to make a change in the future. So this is our reason to be and this is why uh, Diane came up with the Fondation and this is where we look to uh, deliver our services and support to the different entrepreneurs. So that support in itself is really based on three fundamental axes. The chair itself, so uh, the citizen circle and the VDD's investment fund. The chair is in partnership with the St. Joseph University uh, where a chair was created and which role is basically to uh, educate and promote green solutions, uh, the different uh, sustainable development goals of the UNDP. And this is being done through a, a, a team of uh, professionals from the universities of St. Joseph. Uh, they're coming up with programs, they are liaising with municipalities and uh, with the different uh, other associations that look after developing sustainable development goals. And then on the second front, Citizen Circle itself is looking to lobby and create a platform whereby uh, different stakeholders in the Lebanese economy, be it politicians, businessmen, uh, associations, partners and universities, uh, try to basically 
promote uh, eco-sustainable developments, uh, promote solutions that help for these developments. Uh, and then many of these actions evolve around uh, a green solution or clean energy solution in the context of clean energy with the Beritech. Uh, so in there, basically, the efforts are mainly driven towards making a cleaner Lebanon. Uh, so we came up with uh, a campaign for uh, cleaning up beaches, cleaning up forests. We also have a citizen cafe whereby uh, we invite several stakeholders, present a specific case, let's say air pollution, and then we debate about it. We uh, make certain expert intervene and so on. But we also, uh, in many cases, intervene at political level with different ministries, the Ministry of Environment, the OMSAR, and other uh, similar institutions who are basically dealing with waste management uh, uh, solutions and the waste management crisis, more generally speaking. Now, on the last front, the third axe, uh, the, we have the Viridis Investment Fund. Uh, and this is where basically uh, financial support is given to all these various projects, uh, be it driven by the foundation itself, uh, for in the case of, uh, in, uh, for example, uh, where it comes to dealing with OMSAR and the Ministry of Environment, we had lots of work around uh, RDF solutions, uh, reused uh, diesel uh, fuels, uh, and then we funded lots of research work that was done on that end. Uh, but we also make investments into startups and we also make uh, certain uh, financing available to SMEs uh, and we're also developing our own projects in collaboration with other partners, uh, Beritech from one end, I am Capital, uh, and then other partners on very specific projects which I'll come back to in, in just a second. Lately, under Viridis, we've also established a, a kind of green incubator, industrial incubator. So that's Raimondo, basically. It's uh, located in Rumi, in the industrial area. And there, we really uh, seek to have a green industrial entrepreneur or, or businesses that are catering for innovative solutions in the, in the uh, environmental friendly type of waste management solutions. Uh, and I do mention environmental friendly because there are, uh, you can see in the market, uh, waste management solutions that do not really comply with the requirements, uh, be it of the Ministry of the Environment or some international standards that are, for instance, uh, brought upon by the European Union. Uh, so what we are looking to do is to push these different companies or entrepreneurs to make their research, their innovation uh, through Raimondo, where they can have a space for their R&D or for their warehousing solution or for any project that is really aimed towards uh, recycling of plastics, uh, the, the reuse of uh, glass, uh, uh, Basil mentioned Fabric Aid, for instance. So, Fabric Aid do use uh, Raimondo for their sorting of uh, textile and the reuse of textile uh, and so on, etc. Uh, obviously, uh, on, in Raimondo and as part of the projects that we are developing, uh, today we are really looking towards uh, electronic waste solutions. So, Fondation Dian has launched the campaign for battery collection uh, throughout Lebanon in partnership with Liban Post and Energizer. Uh, we've also made an investment with EcoServe, uh, whereby EcoServe is a, it would be the uh, partner to collect the electronic waste, including batteries. Uh, with the EU, we're also basically looking at uh, coming up with a, a storage slash recycling facility for lead batteries and all of these different uh, components are also being launched through Raimondo. And as I just mentioned, at Fondation Dian, we look at the projects, uh, whichever source they come from, be it from an entrepreneur with an idea 
that is uh, who is coming to the foundation and proposing his project we also uh, look at projects through partnerships uh, so say uh, the icu is having discussion with uh, the eu about uh, a, a specific project uh, in this case for instance the collection and uh, storage of lead batteries so they come talk to us and we create that partnership uh, the investments happen at early stage or late stage. Uh, I'll tend to say that within Fondation Diane, uh, since we are in a very niche market, so we're basically looking at green uh, and environmental friendly type of businesses and solutions. Uh, so that somehow narrows the, the scope of intervention. Not because the scope of intervention itself is small, we think there are lots of opportunities to be covered. The market itself is fully open to welcome green solutions because we really lack on them. But the issue is more in terms of uh, providers of solution. So all that to say, we really encourage uh, entrepreneurs and SMEs uh, and other companies that are looking to turn into green and sustainable solution uh, to basically partner up with Fondation Dian, and whenever that is coming, we're happy to deal with them. So going back to that point, today, since we are being in that niche market, so the, the, the offer uh, side of the business is not really there. We need, need to push on it. We count on people like you and on partners like uh, Berry Tech, Kafalat, to promote these different activities. But uh, on the upside, uh, since that the scope of intervention is still narrow today. Uh, Fondation Dian is basically open to make these investments at different level. As I mentioned, early stage, late stage, growth stage, or even in particular cases, greenfield projects, uh, as I mentioned, uh, which Fondation Dian itself is uh, developing. So uh, the way we make these investments is mostly through equity financing. We make participation uh, into startups through investing in their capital. So this is plain vanilla equity. Uh, in specific cases, if the relationship is not well established, uh, but we think the underlying project or service is worth the shot, then we can provide uh, financing through loan uh, solutions. Uh, and in more specific cases, on the convertible loan, that opens up the channel to basically turn our financing into an investment with these startups at a later stage. Once we've seen how the business is developing, the level of uh, uh, synergy and, and uh, efficient communication between the two parties, uh, then we basically uh, can convert these loans into equity. And then there are specific programs for green support. So these are basically the different events that I just mentioned, since, such as uh, the Citizen Circle, so uh, uh, Citizen Cafe, uh, green markets, uh, uh, circular economy uh, conference, conferences, etc. So these are the different projects uh, that can basically uh, benefit from our support program. And then last, just to uh, go back to that, basically uh, what I call the eligibility uh, criteria for Fondation Dian. As I mentioned, uh, we're quite open on different type of uh, businesses, activities at whichever stage they're at. Uh, but most importantly, when we look at an opportunity, we really care to see that at least uh, one or two uh, of the sustainable development goals are there. And these would basically include the clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy. So these are really in the context of uh, that uh, uh, clean energy program with Beritech. Uh, and then you have a few other uh, SDGs, mostly revolving around uh, the economy, the sustainable cities, climate action, life below water and life on land. So these come around uh, towards more green 
and environmental friendly uh, type of activities. So that's us in a nutshell, and this is what we do. So uh, I'll leave the room for other questions uh, as part of the uh, open Q&A. So you, I'm, I'm basically done. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you, and, uh, thank you Salim, for, for, the, for this great presentation. And I would like also to thank again uh, Nicola and uh, and Basel for, for their interventions. So just a reminder for the audience, if you have any questions, please post them on, on Slido. Uh, before moving to the q and I have like a few questions for, for our guests today. Uh, I'll start with, the, with Salim since you're, uh, you're on mute and you're with us now. So uh, how do you think is the investment market doing in Lebanon with the current situation? So uh, can you, can you give us like some insights from, from your perspective on the current situation? Of course. So uh, there's nothing too fancy about what I'll say. I just think that everyone today is pretty much aware of how difficult and harsh the investment environment is. Uh, so clearly with the dollar issue and the depegging of the Lebanese pound, this is creating uh, uh, a disequilibrium, a kind of uh, schism between the, inv the uh, with the investment rationale in making uh, investments in Lebanon, but also looking after uh, raw material and development plans for any startup that needs to deploy that money towards project, having the issue of using these funds and making these uh, development and, and expansion plan and uh, plans that we're going into. So clearly this is one example. Uh, today I think the market is not settled and I think it would be very difficult for anyone to have a clear outlook on how things are going to go. Uh, but I think like, with, uh, with the players in the industry such as Fondation Dian, uh, Beritech, uh, Agritech, uh, Kafalat, so that there are certain organisms that are really committed to making this change. So despite the difficulties of the economic environment, I think we are still going ahead. We are still allocating funds and monies towards this goal. Uh, today, I think any analysis and any investment will need to go on a case by case basis. What's easy, uh, in our case, in the case of clean energy, uh, is that, as I mentioned before, the market is open. There hasn't been much done. So I think anything that can come up uh, uh, going forward, be it economically uh, sustained or not, I think it will be welcome. And, uh, and I think from an investment and financial standpoint, uh, we will find the necessary solutions and we will be creative enough. Uh, as Nicola mentioned before, we are working on a green fund uh, between Fondation Dian and IM Capital. Uh, today, we haven't put that on hold simply because we believe that the opportunities will be there. Uh, and there is a lot to be done in that uh, uh, market, in that environment. Uh, I did mention lots of projects by Fondation Dian, uh, similar to the battery recycling project uh, the uh, electronic waste collection. Uh, we are, for instance, making a further investment with Compost Baladi uh, regarding the establishment of a manufacturing plant for compost solutions. The, sim yeah, the only reason I'm mentioning these is to say that despite the difficulty of and the market conditions today that are very difficult to apprehend or to build around, uh, I think investment solutions and financing solutions would still be available and made available for those who really can come up with innovative ideas and ideas that can serve uh, on the longer term the Lebanese economy and the sustainable development goals. Thank, thank, thank you, Salim. Great idea. It's great to hear this. Uh, I will move to our second question. Uh, Nicola, would you please uh, answer this? So, like, what advice? can you give the clean tech startups to, uh, to attract investors? 
uh, okay, advice to give to clean tech startups to attract investors. Yeah, uh, you know, in, again, in, in what Salim said, uh, you know, these are really uncertain times. And uh, the problem is that, you know, uh, we didn't mention the, the COVID situation. You know, in Lebanon, if you ask me this question before October, after October, or after March, after COVID, you know, so <laughs> the answer is it would be different. Uh, you know, as an investor, obviously, and this is a worldwide, I mean, it's post COVID, uh, have, you know, COVID has changed all the, uh, you know, uh, how, how investors look at, uh, at the, the startups, you know. Uh, now they have to be COVID friendly, you know, uh, or COVID immune. Uh, because this is a, a new world that we're going into, and it's a, and, and the thing is that it's it's I mean the good thing I mean, good thing yeah it's it's worldwide and you know? so it's not just pertaining to Lebanon now obviously Lebanon has its own challenges uh, but then this has been for, since October and maybe since before but on top of this you know this uncertainty everyone is living all all over the world we're living in this uncertainty and it's during these times that you really see the entrepreneurs and, and, and really have to, that, will, that will come up. So uh, investors, obviously, and, and, and entrepreneurs or startups do solve problems. That's what they do, they, they solve problems. And, and so today I'm guessing there are problems that needs to be solved. And the only way to solve them is through startups. So this is, you know, uh, the big companies are closing, you know, they're firing people, et cetera. You know, all these multinationals we're seeing, you know, Hertz is closing down, you know. Uh, so so it's, it's really a new world. So now we have to see, uh, and, and, and problems need to be solved, you know, today, post-pandemic. Uh, and so the only way to do it is through startups. So the message is that uh, for startups is that, first of all, as you saw in this panel, there is money still to be deployed. Investors, I mean, worldwide in, in investments, you know, I, I'm not sure that investors would invest in new companies uh, for at least like a year or 18 months, you know, until things settle. So they would maybe concentrate on maximizing uh, the life of their portfolio, you know, those hanging rounds, et cetera. I'm not sure that they would do new investments or they would be maybe really in some targeted and, and niche, niche sectors where there would be uh, uh, problems that would be solved. Uh, now, it, these panelists, that, uh, at least they've shown that there is appetite, you know, to, to support uh, clean tech and these types of, of sectors that are, uh, there are opportunities out there and they will still be there, you know, recycling, uh, ecos, uh, sustainability, etc. Will, will still be needed, will still be there. So, and there will be still uh, problems to, to solve in this area. So, uh, go, go there, solve problems, try to see the potential and opportunities during crisis and come to the investors because they would be looking for uh, opportunities. And thank you, thank you for, for this uh, intervention. Uh, I would uh, have, yes, so Basel, uh, you, you have unmuted yourself. Okay, so uh, Basel, you've highlighted in your presentation multiple clean tech startups, which ISME has invested in. Uh, I would like to know, like, how would you, how do you describe the journey with them and the impact that they are leaving in, in our society from from an investor point of view? Uh, yes, actually, uh, with our grants program, we supported several initiatives, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't see a, a like a large investment in uh, these startups from a large VC fund, and this is related to two. Uh, aspects actually the first one that the the VCs that I've mentioned uh, and what we call the 331 circular 331 VCs were more toward like uh, pure software companies software as a surface marketplaces and they didn't build an expertise in clean tech actually investing in clean tech requires a certain expertise from the investor perspective and I'm today I'm excited to hear that we will finally have a VC dedicated or an investment arm dedicated for clean tech with the appropriate uh, know-how and with a mindset that, as I've mentioned in my presentation, longer horizon, uh, different approach to investment, different KPI measurements, and so on. So 
So if we look at our portfolio, we've had some successful ideas, but it didn't pick up truly where we didn't see a, like a series A investment or a series B investment in a clean tech company, pure clean tech company. However, as I've said, Yanni, today this classification might be changing a bit where if we take a, like a learning, e-learning platform could be, could falls under clean tech since it, it has an impact on the environment and so a positive impact on the environment. But if we take like pure clean tech, uh, companies related to recycling and so on, excluding fabric ad that, that is doing very well. Uh, we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't witness yet a, a very a successful story. To my knowledge, maybe there is some startups out there that are successful. Uh, and I'm counting on programs like yours and like Veritas in order to, to push it forward and to have uh, uh, in the upcoming years a successful story. Uh, like, thank you, Basta, for, for, for asking the question. And like, it's really exciting to see uh, how, like, uh, yeah, yeah. it's true that the situation, like, we're living in a tough situation, the, all the uncertainty and all of this, and we can still uh, find people, organizations, uh, companies that are still trying to uh, uh, to invest, to put the effort, and try to make a difference. So, uh, uh, I believe now we can. Uh, Go ahead and I'll share my screen to go through the Q&A, uh, uh, the, the questions that were asked by the, uh, by the audience. And uh, just a second. Okay, we should be able now to see my screen. Okay, so the first question is uh, for uh, for Nicola. Uh, dear, dear Mr. Nicola, uh, if I have ideas that some uh, uh, that some are developed to start with, and some that are an idea stage, how can I apply or meet up with you for consultants? Uh, I I don't know if the second one is uh, is, is is like uh, from the, the same uh, other the same. Participant, so he's asking for your contact number, please. So, Nicola, do you have any inputs uh, here that you can give? No, I see. I, I sent my email. I mean, the uh, the slide. Uh, the uh, so first of all, as as I said, I am capital. Uh, we have several components, and uh, for the idea stage, there's the the, the we, we will turn them to the seed or the speed accelerator because this is where they get more help at the idea stage. You know, so, and, and then afterwards they would go to the angel uh, funding round and then eventually they would come to IM Capital or for, for further funding. So, uh, or they could apply for the mentorship uh, as well. So, uh, I, I would say at the idea stage, uh, really just idea. I mean, this is, it's too soon for us as I am to, to come in and to invest. Uh, they would go to much earlier uh, uh, blocks, which is is the, the seed accelerators or very tech for that matter. I mean the uh, uh, your program, which helps at the idea stage and give grants for them to become ready for the uh, uh, follow-on uh, funding. So really, as I, as I showed you the uh, the life cycle, the more you go to the early 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 stage and idea stage, there are other specific programs. Uh, that are created uh, for that. So you could talk to Peritech, uh, clean tech, uh, if, it's, if it's in the clean, if it's agro, it's agri tech, uh, or the accelerator. So, so hold on, I hope I answered this. Uh, the mentoring platform, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, there's another uh, question for you, like uh, Mr. Nicholas mentioned the new mentoring platform in Lebanon. Yeah. May, may you please elaborate more on that? How can we join? So join, join as a mentor or as a startup. So I don't know if this is uh, 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 to, to join the mentorship or the, the, the I mean, or to, be, to become a mentor or a, a venture in the program. Anyways, you go on the website. So again, the website is in my presentation and then you can apply for either. Okay, here. Uh, and if I want like just also to, to answer for uh, the first question, so as, as Nicola said, like uh, Clean Energy program is one of the programs that Veritech is, uh, uh, is working on. And it is basically oriented for people who have like ideas, 
uh, yeah, prototypes uh, and like maybe the proof of concepts, uh, maybe even a product. So all of these uh, the personas can apply and benefit from the from the grant uh, that we will be the giving in the different phases of the program. And uh, at the end of the program, they will be like more ready for uh, for investors like, such as IAM Capital or other investors uh, to invest. Uh, okay, so uh, one last question is for uh, for Salim. So if if you want a clean energy, why don't we ask the support from the government for solar energy uh, use? Well, the, the easy answer to that is that there are many questions that we need to ask to the government. It doesn't boil down to only uh, a clean energy or solar energy. But if you want uh, something a little bit more uh, based on factual information, uh, I, what we can say is that the government has been trying to provide solar energy uh, solution. This has been done through the Ministry of uh, Energy and with, in collaboration with different association. Uh, if not mistaken, I think even Kafalat was part of it but mostly the central bank has been giving subsidized loan for the use of uh, solar energy solutions. Now, it doesn't always uh, succeed. The, the, the road to success is paved with different challenges and we've had many of them ever since, uh, ever, I, mean, I can't go back uh, in time, but uh, it wasn't the f only first government, but even the previous governments haven't been able to put in place a proper uh, policy for the use of solar energy. And I think the issue to that is not really pertaining to the government themselves, but rather to the consumer. Uh, there are two sides to the, to, the, to the coin. The first one is purely technical. So in some cases, solar energy solutions are not always fit uh, depending on uh, the geographical location, the use, the output, etc. And then on the second front, and this is the most important one, I think uh, education and awareness need to be uh, enhanced and risen across the different stakeholders in Lebanon. So uh, today, most of the SMEs or large corporates have been looking into solar energy solution as a costly solution, uh, an alternative to uh, fuel energy and very little of them have been turning into solar energy solution. Uh, Cortas is one of the companies in which we have invested uh, and for which the investment was conditional uh, of them turning into solar energy. Okay. Uh, ABC is one of the other, uh, since related to Diane and uh, the father family, is one of the other companies that started looking into solar energy solutions. But these come at a cost. And as long and as long as the fuel energy was subsidized by the Lebanese government, it wasn't competing. And I think this is one of the issues of the government that today they are facing and trying to find solutions to. But on the other hand, if you want to succeed in implementing solar energy solutions and clean energies, it has to start with the consumer and the consumer has to be ready to make that investment and pick up on the longer run in terms of return on investment and making a cleaner energy available uh, in Lebanon. So awareness is one of the main things that need to be uh, promoted and pushed on to the consumer. And this is why it's also one of the main pillars uh, within Fondation Diane. If we don't manage to uh, create that level of awareness today within the uh, older generations, I think the bet is on the new generation and the young entrepreneur, uh, very particularly those who basically would fit into the clean energy program uh, that is being uh, uh, put in place by Beritech. Thank you once again, Salim, Nicola, and Basil, and uh, thank you to all our listeners. We hope you have enjoyed the session of today. Uh, before closing, please keep in mind that the deadline to apply for the first batch of the Clean Energy Accelerator is beginning of June. So if you think you have an innovative solution in the clean tech sector, I urge you to check the website and submit your application. 
also when signing up now it will be great if you can answer a small survey so that we can keep on uh, improving our webinars uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll update you uh, we might be having a uh, one last webinar uh, webinar number nine so uh, we'll stay tuned uh, uh, for the uh, for some uh, for the promotion and we we'll hope to see you uh, then uh, thank you so much bye bye thank you Bye bye. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye.